First off, we need to make the sourdough starter. Um, it's basically a mixture of flour and water. So it's 120 grams of wholemeal flour, and then 20 grams of strong white flour, and then 120 grams of water. So you just want to mix it until it combines. You don't need to do it for ages, it's just a simple together. So now we're going to put it in the jar and we're going to leave it with the lid slightly off just so all the air can get into it and your starter can start growing. So what you do is you weigh out 150 grams of your starter, 70 grams of wholemeal flour, 20 grams of white flour and 75 mils of water. And you're going to do what you did before, just simply mix it. Is this what they call feeding? Yes, this is the feeding process. And it's very simple and easy. So now I'm going to put my fed sourdough starter back into the same jar. And it is important that we put it in, into the same jar. I know it looks a bit horrible, but it is kind of kind of the home and the environment that it's used to and there's all the kind of bacteria and yeast inside of that jar and it just helps it kind of grow and keep stable. This has had three hours now, I'm just going to put the lid on and pop it in the fridge. And then tomorrow we're going to take it out and feed it again and we're going to carry on this process um, for about between 10 to 14 days when you start seeing it bubbling and being alive. So I've just kept it in the fridge and this is, you can see how it's lovely and bubbly from what this is, kind of just stodgy dough mix, and this is all bubbly. Now I'm going to put 440 grams of strong wholemeal flour. And now I'm going to add 50 grams of strong white flour. Now I'm going to grab the wonderful starter. I'm going to put 150 grams in. And then the water, so it's 350 mils of water. Now's the fun part of the mixing. So I'm going to put it in. And now we're going to put it on a slow speed just to get everything combined. going to see if the gluten's been worked so we're going to grab a big blob of it and we'll, what we're looking for if the dough is stretchy enough and I'm just going to stretch out and work it and see if we can start seeing the light through which we can there you go if it starts making holes then it just means that you have to put it on for mix on fast speed for a couple more minutes until you can get to that point so now we're going to add the salt, so it's two and a half teaspoons. So now on a medium speed for three minutes just to get the salt in. At the salt stage, when you put the salt in, I would put in your flavouring. So you could do a Christmas one with like cranberries and pecans, or you could do like a really healthy one with like seeds. Um, in here I've got um, Lin seeds and sesame seeds and nigella and I think that's a really good mixture. So now we're going to take the dough out of the machine. We're just going to leave it to prove now. It's going to take between one and a half to maybe three hours depending on how warm your room is and stuff. And we're going to cover it in a bit of flour and this flour kind of is like a little blanket to kind of keep it a bit warm put a damp tea towel on and leave it to prove for about an hour and a half and then check on it after that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to knock back your dough and this, you can see now, is lovely big and bubbly. So I'm going to grab a side and push it into the centre and then turn the bowl, grab a side, push it into the centre. Again and again. So this method is to basically knock out the air that you've just created but also it creates structure in your dough and lovely um, air bubbles later when you're baking your bread. 
Okay, and now I'm going to sprinkle some flour over the top, like we did before. And then I'm going to put the damp tea towel over it. Now the bread has been proving, we're now going to do the exciting part of shaping. Um, and we're going to shape it into a lovely ball. So what I'm going to do is get some flour and sprinkle it on the surface. And then I'm going to tip my dough out. So now we're just going to pat it out, fold it in on itself to kind of get a nice ball. I'm going to turn it over and this is your outside of your bread. Now I'm going to sprinkle flour over my Benetton, get the bread and tip it over and pinch it all together. And then we're going to put our damp cloth over the top and now I'm going to put it in the fridge overnight. Okay, so this has been in the fridge overnight and now I'm going to leave it at room temperature for between one to two hours for it to grow at room temperature. So now we're going to put the bread in the oven. If you can see here, I'm going to poke it and it's not responding that much, it's still quite dimpled, so I kind of just poke the air out of it. I'm gonna pick up the Dutch oven. The bread goes on the thinner part of the Dutch oven instead of inside the big saucepan part. If we get a bit of flour so that it doesn't get stuck, and then you wanna flip it out, quick motion. Okay, you wanna get a sharp knife and you can do whatever scoring you want. I'm just gonna do a simple kind of cross. So you've cut your bread, and now I'm going to place the lid on top, pop it in. And now I wanna turn it, the oven down to 200. So after 20 minutes, we're gonna open the lid and see if the bread is ready to take the lid off. Okay, so we're gonna take the bread out of the oven. Here you go, we're gonna do the big reveal. Lift the lid off. Careful with the steam, and we're going to put it back in the oven for 20 minutes until it goes lovely golden brown. Bread is ready, so I'm going to get it out of the oven. So to check if your bread's ready, I'm just going to flip it over. Be careful, and that lovely hollow sound means that it's ready. And now we're going to put it onto the wire rack to leave it to cool.